The research said that you go down a tunnel, you meet a being of light, you go into this transcendent reality where you meet dead relatives and spiritual beings. You may have a life review, then you'll come to a border, which if you cross, you know you're going to die. So it's a perfectly valid question to ask, is this near-death experience a model of what will happen when you die? I faded out like from reality and the next thing after that I remember was seeing myself on the emergency table and they were working on me trying to revive me. Being brought up this tunnel of light. I was feeling all this love and this acceptance. And out of nowhere she just asked when she can see God again. I woke up about 4.30 in the morning with severe back pain, headache. The next thing my family knew is I was uh, lapsed into general epileptic seizures. The reality is I just went deep into coma and it was a severe case of uh, E. coli bacterial meningitis, which is a real shocker because almost all cases of E. coli meningitis occur in newborns. By the time she found me, I was already getting stiff because I died in the morning and people really didn't come into my room until about 10 a.m. Oh my gosh. So at, at about that time, they started uh, measuring my vital signs and uh, there were no vital signs for an hour and a half, at which time they gave up. My eyes were closed and I, and I was completely in this coma, but I was aware of everything that was going on around me. I could hear and see and feel everything that was happening. I could feel everything the doctors were doing. They were poking needles into me and um, putting in IV tubes and things like that. And I could see and hear things that were beyond the room that my physical body was in. And I realized that I could even see my physical body. It was like I felt that I had become separate from my body. They had CT and MRI scan data showing that all eight lobes of my brain were affected. No part was spared. And that's why to have an extraordinarily rich experience, far more real than anything I'd ever experienced in my life, completely violates everything I thought I knew about brain mind. Because you need a conscious brain to experience. But no, you don't. It was like being in dirty jello. I called it the earthworm's eye view. Uh, and I was there for a very long period of time. I'm sure I didn't have any kind of memory formation moment to moment. So it seemed to last forever. But the good news is it didn't. I was rescued by this slowly spinning pure white light with fine silvery and golden tendrils. And as it came towards me, I realized it came with a perfect musical melody. As I went to the light, and some people you know, report on tunnels and things like yeah. that, mine was, I guess you could call it a tunnel in a way, but it was this um, rainbow shimmering light, and the light was, but part of it was going to the light, and the other part of it was coming from the light, and as I was moving up, I, I, I sort of realized that one, th that the column of light going up was all the people that were dying at that time, and the other uh, side of the, of the same light, actually it was the same light beam, uh, on the other side was all the souls coming in, being born, and I, I realized I was on the wrong train. <laughs> I um, encountered my deceased father. My father had died 10 years prior. And I felt that he was there to greet me. And um, he, he wanted me to know that it wasn't my time. But even though it wasn't my time to die, I still felt I had the choice. I could still choose to die if I wanted to. Not music heard with the ears, because in those realms, our awareness goes far beyond the limitations of physical eyes and ears and a physical brain. In that realm, it felt like because we don't have our bodies, we don't have vocal cords, um, it was like my father's um, essence and mine, it just, we just merged. So I knew exactly what he wanted me to know. And he wanted me to know that I had suffered up until this point. And even though I didn't have to go back to my body, if I chose not to go back, I would be missing out on the gifts that were now waiting for me. So I understood that now if I go back, 
I won't be living a life of suffering anymore because of what I now knew. But the good news is that beautiful spinning white light up and up and opened up into a brilliant ultra real realm that I call the Gateway Valley. And that was filled with many earth-like features. It was uh, a, a world of perfection and ideals. There was no death or decay anywhere. Beautiful, lush plant life, flowers, buds on trees, blossoms, colors beyond the rainbow. I was a speck of awareness on a butterfly wing among millions of butterflies, looping and spiraling in vast formations above this, this uh, gateway valley. And in that valley were thousands of beings dancing, lots of joy and merriment. And when I wrote it all up weeks later, I said these were souls. I knew there were souls mm. between lives and that there was this incredible joy and merriment going on. And it was all being fueled because up above, were these swooping orbs, pure uh, spiritual orbs of divine energy, these, uh, which, which I came to call angelic choirs when I had to put a, a label on them. But it was the anthems and chants and hymns that would thunder down from this beautiful chorus of angels above that was fueling this incredible festivity of uh, sparkling waterfalls into crystal blue pools and all of this joy and merriment. Right after my experience, I'd say within a couple of months after my experience, um, the light would just come and get me and take me out of my body. So I would go to the light again, and the light and I would have more conversations, and I was always given an idea or an invention to bring back every exchange I've ever had with the light. It took about a year or so to where I got comfortable with these experiences and just would let it happen, and Phyllis Atwater and uh, Ken Ring were the first to tell me that, Melon, nobody else does this. I said, well, I, I go back to the light every day. At one point, I was told I would, from now on, have contact to universal intelligence and that I could, I could answer any question. And I've been tested in double-blind university experiments on this, on being able to give answers about something I should know nothing about whatsoever. But I go to the light and I get answers. But I was warned before I came back. The light said, when you go back, don't be surprised. Even if you or anyone else could answer any question, don't be surprised if that's not the point. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, at this time in history, humans are much more interested in the questions than the answers. And that turned out to be my, exper my experience over many years. I would work on these great experiments and these think tanks. We would come up with all these great ideas, and uh, I would draw schematics. I would, I would get frequencies down to the decimals. And uh, quite often, the devices were never built, or if they were, they were never really pursued. And I, I predicted uh, eight um, astronomical um, discoveries 20 years before they were discovered and um, thank God I, I, I did lectures about them and documented it so that I can prove what I'm saying but uh, I was not a scientist or an astronomer or a physicist but I had seen things that I could report on and, and they've turned out to be very accurate. So you felt comforted. And that's why you so, felt at peace. Absolutely. And that is such a beautiful lesson that comes not just from my near death experience, but from near death experiences yeah. across all cultures, all nations, going back several thousand years. The stories are always of this beautiful peace, like we are home. Mm. This incredible joy and oneness and that God force of pure, infinite love is so healing. Uh, the good news is you don't need a near-death experience to know this. I also felt something which I can only describe as a feeling of unconditional love. It was like a euphoric kind of feeling. I suddenly realized that I don't have to do anything to prove myself. I don't have to do anything to feel that I deserve to be loved. I was loved just because I existed. It turns out that it didn't all happen in that gateway valley. That in fact the music from those angelic choirs provided portals to higher and higher levels all the way out to the core. And the core was infinite uh, inky blackness but filled to overflowing with that God force of love. And all in the setting of the entire material universe and lower spiritual realms having been shrunk down to this complex oversphere that was there as a source of, of, of lessons and teaching. Uh, but in that realm was this incredible oneness uh, with the divine, a sense that our very conscious awareness is directly connected. There's no separation 
between us and that God force. Of course, the God force is the pure love, yes. with absolute, uh, unconditional love for all of creation. And in that awakening, my father said to me, now that you know this truth, you need to go back and live fearlessly. And I understood if I went back, my body would heal. Um, the doctor, though, he told my family, he said that, look, she may have woken up from the coma, but she is still very, very weak. She's still very, very sick, and her body is full of cancer and tumors. And so um, don't raise your hopes, because even if she survives, there's a long journey ahead. Within four days, the tumor shrunk by 70%. Within three weeks, they couldn't find any trace of cancer in my body. Well, the doctors had estimated early in the week that I had about a 10% chance of living through it. After seven days in coma, um, with uh, you know just a horrible uh, medical picture in terms of prognosis, uh, they predicted that had gone down to a 2% chance of survival. But in that medical conference they held that Sunday morning, they recommended to the family stopping the antibiotics. And the reason for that is they thought there was no chance for my recovery. So when I did actually open my eyes on that Sunday morning, they were shocked. Oh, uh, I didn't, my brain was so completely savaged by this experience, I had no idea who these beings were standing at my bedside. My sisters, my sons, uh, my former spouse, my mother. I didn't know who they were. Mm. All I remembered was where I'd been, this incredibly rich journey. Uh, and I also had, for about 36 hours after I, I came back to life and they pulled out the breathing tube, I was kind of in and out of a crazy, paranoid, delusional ICU psychosis, a nightmare, uh, back and forth in that world. But the memories from deep coma in many ways were far more real, vibrant, and alive uh, than any of the rest of it. And that paranoid delusional nightmare, those memories faded within about a week. The memories from the deep coma experience are as fresh today as if they happened yesterday. Oh my goodness. You know, when millions and millions of people start sharing these stories, yes. there is no doubt yes. of the eternity of soul and the, and the reality of this God. After that experience, after actually dying and coming back, um, I don't follow dogma or any kind of religion or spirituality because it's like now I know. I know that I'm a spiritual being. We all are. Every single one of us, we are. We don't have to work at it. I don't have to keep working at it or trying to be more spiritual. I already am. There's nothing to work at. We all are. I realized from death that actually my purpose here is to immerse myself in life fully, not to spend it thinking about creating the perfect afterlife. I'm here for a reason and I'm here to be who I am. I'm a facet of this universe, I'm an aspect um, and I am the way I am for a reason. My purpose is to be as me as I can be. What I learned and what I believe to this day is that um, the, the, bot, the physical body that we live in actually gives us um, uh, uh, the most beautiful vehicle ever imagined to experience time and space. There, there may be people here that think they're in pain, that uh, think their life is not anything like they, they want, but I tell you, um, I have met people that would give you anything for the worst day of your life because even the worst day of your life is so filled with potential.